I've been playing around with MVim Tree Sitter, which turns out to be a pretty cool tool. And if you're not familiar with what Tree Sitter is, it's a parser generator tool and incremental parsing library. And what does that mean exactly? Well, it does stuff like giving you this nice fancy highlighting as opposed to the old way of highlighting, like pattern matching using regular expressions. So I've been working on this problem at work where I have a ton of JSON schema. And if you're not sure what JSON schema is, it's basically just a specification for how to structure JSON. So you typically will have something with this type key right here and type will be like an object or a string or an integer or a Boolean or like some other things. And so in this schema, this name property right here is going to be a type string and this age property is going to be type integer and the minimum value can be zero. But working with JSON schema is really kind of a pain and I've been wanting to convert this into Zod schemas so that we can use Zod to validate our data at runtime as well as be able to generate some types from the Zod schemas because working with something like this Zod schema is way nicer than working with just JSON like this. Although this is, I guess, technically not JSON. We're looking at TypeScript, but I just copy pasted this JSON and put it into this TypeScript file and let Prettier auto format it so that it looks nice and TypeScripty. But I have about 10,000 lines of JSON that I need to parse and convert into Zod objects. But that is a lot of JSON and it would take an eternity to do all of that by hand. So being the NeoVim user that I am, I went and created my own little plugin. And down here at the bottom, I have all these little functions that make a bunch of tree sitter queries and, and go and convert all the JSON schema stuff into Zod objects. And I have that bound to a key binding. And if I just hit that, then it takes all of these schemas right here. And now I have some linting errors, but if I auto format, then it'll get rid of those. And now I have a bunch of Zod schemas and I was able to keep information here. Like this should be a minimum value and there's a max value right here. And there's this regular expression pattern. This email is an email and I was able to keep like optional values as well as a couple other things. So if I undo this, if I like just copy this object and put it in there, and I'm going to change this to an array. So, so oh my gosh, okay. Array. And then I need to take this guy and I'll say items and put that object in there. Although I need to say this is a type object and put a comma right there. Oh, this guy goes in there as well. And then run my little program. And it also gives me an array right here where I have the correct Zod object inside of this array. But the way that I ended up doing this was if I open up tree sitter playground right here, and if you haven't seen this before tree sitter playground, this is uh, just a AST or abstract syntax tree. And as I go down the tree and look at all the different nodes, you can see that it highlights the stuff over in the code that I'm looking at. So currently what's highlighted is the, the string and that is a property identifier. And if I come down here, then those are arguments. And if I want to see like what this node right here is where this zero is, then we just walk up the tree till we get there. And that is a, just a number and it's a child of this arguments node. And so you probably get the idea, but I can also open up this other window right here. I already have a little query in here, but this syntax I believe is either based off of scheme or is scheme. That's not clear to me, but it's a Lisp like language. So there's a ton of parentheses, but anyway, so if I get rid of that and let's see about, I'm gonna undo all of this and then let's see about doing some queries on here. So let's say that I want to find all of the objects that look like this and have a type property where the type is equal to integer. Then I could come down here and I know that this thing right here is going to be an object. So I can start off by saying object and then inside of there, I know that there's going to be a pair and that pair is going to be this thing right here, I guess right here specifically. So I'll come in here and say pair. And then inside of that is going to be a, a property identifier, I believe. Let's take a look at the tree. That's not highlighting anything. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Okay. So property identifier. 
and then I can uh, create this little variable thing. It's called it's like a, a capture. So I'll just call that ID. Well, I'll say type type key, and then I can create an assertion where I'll say eek for equal, and then type key, and I want that equal to type. And then inside of here, uh, there's going to be a value. Well, let's just walk down the tree again. Oh, okay, I needed to update the syntax tree. That's why the highlighting was being all kind of funky. So if I come back over here, I have this property identifier, and then uh, I have this key, and inside the key is a string fragment. So I'll just grab that, and this is gonna be a string, and inside string is gonna be a string fragment, and I will call this type value, eh, or just value, we'll just call it value, and then I want this to be equal to string, although I said I was looking for integer, right? I did, but well, I guess it's pretty easy to change, and for some reason this is not matching anywhere, so what did I do wrong? Ah, I had one too many parentheses in there. So anyway, if I move my cursor over this capture, this value capture, then you can see that it highlights in the document everywhere where there is a string, where the string fragment inside that string is equal to string. But also where it's inside of an object that is in, has a pair inside of it, where inside that pair there is a property identifier that is also equal to type. So for example, if I change this right here to like foo, then this will no longer match on anything unless I come over here and change this to foo and then come back down here. And now you can see that it's matching again because this value that is equal to string is also right next to a type property or property identifier that is equal to foo. And then if I wanted to capture this pair inside of a variable and I'll just call that pair and then move my cursor over there and you can see that it's matching that pair as well as if I wanted to put a match on this entire outer object, then I come over here to the end. We'll just call this uh, uh, schema because it's a, a JSON schema. And there you go. Then you can see that it highlights the entire object. So I can create these different queries and use those queries to get the information that I'm looking for inside the document. And that makes it a lot easier to perform the different transformations that I, I need to in order to find the different pieces that I'm looking for in the document and easily create those transformations so that I can easily take something like all of this stuff and easily turn it into something like this where I have all my JSON stuff. And of course, there's going to be some issues right here because <laughs> this should have been type. But now that I change that to type and if I run my thing again, then it works. And I actually tried doing this same sort of exercise starting with just like writing a JavaScript script, but I found that using TreeSitter has been way more reliable and it just kind of takes care of things. I don't have to write all these weird little edge cases that was really just becoming difficult with writing JavaScript. And TreeSitter really just allows me to be more flexible in what I'm able to do inside this document. So for instance, uh, let's see, I'll take this object again and I'll just say const schema, actually no, this is a person's schema equals this thing. And I'll get rid of that. So even though I've extracted this from the array and let's actually also put some something else in here. What if I do, uh, yeah, I'll try the, the foo thing again. And this will also be a type of object and it'll have properties. And inside here, let's say we have bar and this will be a type of array, because why not? And then items, and we need something else in here. Let's just have, a, well, yeah, sure, why not? Let's have a, a date, and this will be type string, and the format will be a date time. There, and then let's try to convert that, and, oh, I forgot to change foo back to type. And there you go. And it looks like I have a little bug in here. This should be an object. So I'll have to go and figure out where that bug is and fix it. But uh, overall, like this has been pretty interesting and I've learned a lot about TreeSitter and uh, it's it's been a lot of fun trying to figure this out. And I'm just curious if you guys would be interested in me doing a video where I kind of show more in depth how I did this. 
and maybe explain some more things about how I used TreeSitter within NeoVim and how I integrated it into Lua and created this little plugin. And yeah, Lua is definitely far from my favorite programming language that I've ever used, but like, it's not bad. It's pretty easy to pick up. And these queries right here, while at first seemed like the most intimidating thing about using TreeSitter, really wasn't that bad. Just from looking through the documentation, there was some interesting things that I learned about that I haven't seen anywhere else on YouTube, and there's really not a lot of information on TreeSitter or how to use TreeSitter that I found on YouTube. So if that's something that you would be interested in me making a video about, then please like this video and subscribe so that you can get notifications for that content. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, I hope to see you in the next one.